Um, uh, so now it is part two uh, for practical lab experiment on oil and gas, and this is what we have. Um, uh, if you didn't watch part one, I would recommend you to start first by watching part one, uh, so you can catch all the expression uh, that uh, I will uh, going to tell in this lecture. So for this lecture, uh, we are going to talk about capillary pressure, mercury injection, capillary pressure, and bore size distribution, and the enhanced oil recovery experiment. If we have time, we will go through the CO2 storage and micro CT experiments. So let's start first with the capillary pressure um, uh, definition and experiment. So why capillary pressure in general is important? Why we want to measure the capillary pressure in our lab? So in general, capillary pressure is important. It will give you um, an indication of the vertical distribution of uh, fluid, uh, such as uh, oil, water, and gas in your reservoir. Because in your reservoir, according to the height, it, the, the saturation is changing uh, as you go to the top. So more oil you can find to, uh, to the top at the top of your reservoir. So this is, uh, ca is captured by the capillary pressure uh, saturation curve. Uh, also, it can give you an estimate of the hydrocarbon reserve by uh, knowing the initial oil uh, residue and also after water flooding, you can get um, uh, the uh, residual oil saturation. So capillary pressure in general, it is a pressure difference um, between the non-wetting phase, so the pressure of the non-wetting phase, take away the pressure of the wetting phase. So according to this equation, so the capillary pressure is the pressure of the non-wetting phase take away the pressure of the waiting phase. Okay, it is a pressure difference. So let's start from the very beginning. Uh, if you have uh, a paper containing uh, water in this paper, so you have water, and on top of this water, there is oil. Because there is a diff uh, difference in density, you will find the oil uh, floating on the top of the water, and there is a nice line separating this oil and water contact. If you place a capillary tube in this water, what will happen that the water start to rise in this capillary tube? This will, uh, and it will not rise forever. It will stop at a certain, uh, a certain height. This height represents the equilibrium between the gravitational force and the capillary force. Okay, so this height is judged by or governed by the capillary force and the, uh, and the gravitational force. So if we want to express the capillary force, it can be uh, as shown here in this equation. So the capillary force is a relation uh, is relating uh, interfacial tension con uh, between oil and, uh, and the brine, if we have uh, oil, our oil and water, the contact angle between oil and water in, and the, also it is the property of the rock or the capillary tube um, uh, material. And the radius here is, if you, if you are talking about uh, the rock, so it is the radius of the throat of the rock. If you are talking about the capillary tube, so it is the radius of this capillary tube. So according to this, it is, uh, is, uh, this is how you can calculate your capillary pressure. So because we, uh, we, uh, I told you there is this height, the height of uh, where the water will rise in this capillary tube is governed by the equilibrium of capillary force with each act, uh, with, which is acting upward and the gravitational force which is acting downward. So this can be expressed with, with this equation. Okay, so if we just place this the value of the capillary pressure in this um, uh, substitute by this value here, so you can get an expression for height. So the height is a relation of interfacial tension, contact angle, the gravity, and uh, the difference, the density difference between the oil and, uh, and the uh, water or brine, and the radius of the capillary rise. So this equation represents the height, the height uh, or the capillary rise of the water onto, uh, in this capillary tube, or in, if, you, uh, if we take this capillary tube as, um, uh, as a, a pool, so it is, uh, it is the height of the water in this, or as a reservoir, it is the height of your water in this reservoir. So how can we, uh, so as you can see, is there is a relation between the height and the radius. So, so the height and radius, there is a, um, um, they are um, uh, not directly, uh, uh, inversely proportional. So you, will, uh, you can see that if the radius of your capillary tube is um, large, you will find that the height will be small. The amount, uh, so the water will lie a very, very small amount, okay? But if the radius is very small, you will find that the height of the water will, will be high. 
So imagine here we have a, um, uh, some uh, bundle of capillary tube with different radius, and you will find that the, uh, the height of water in this tube is varying. This variation is due to this expression, uh, uh, the relation between the height and the radius, because because everything is the same actually because the interfacial tension is constant the contact angle is constant gravity and the, uh, the density is, uh, is is the same also for all for all the water and uh, for water and oil but the difference here is the radius of the capillary tube so what you will find that uh, uh, the water will rise uh, will rise at a different height so at level a okay if we draw a line through this level what you can find here is that or at this level, all are, uh, are water, 100% saturation of water. At this level, water here and water here, or 100% saturation of water, okay? So what about level B? If we draw a line through this level B, you will find that there is some, um, uh, so like there is a saturation, is not all uh, oil or, or water. So this is a combination between water and oil with a different, um, uh, uh, because of the variation of the height, caused us to have a variation of saturation in this capillary tube. I want you to, to catch this is, uh, as uh, what will happen in the your reservoir. So what about uh, level C? So as you, uh, um, you go further in the height or increase further in your height, so if you draw a line here, you will find 100% saturation of oil. Actually, it's, you cannot in your reservoir have 100% saturation of oil because there is a minimum amount of water, whatever the pressure or whatever um, the action you are taking or for trying to force this water to go outside of this port, you will not um, let it, it cannot, you cannot get rid of all the, uh, all the water in your pool. You have to reach irreducible water saturation or what we are calling conate water saturation. So imagine what I, uh, I told you here on our reservoir. So actually in our reservoir during oil migration, so, so oil start to migrate, so what I, the case I'm t uh, telling you here, so the, our reservoir is 100% saturation with, uh, saturated with water and oil started to migrate. After migration and the, having equilibrium between the gravitational force and the capillary force in our reservoir, we will find a high distribution uh, of the saturation, uh, ver vertical distribution according to the height. So starting with 100% saturation of, um, uh, of water, to the top, we will go and the, uh, and the amount of oil will increase until we reach the maximum amount of oil that you will find in your reservoir. So all this can be expressed um, and, uh, and identified of this height using capillary pressure. And I will show you uh, how, this, um, how we can use the capillary pressure to, uh, to, uh, to calculate this height. So we have actually three zones in our reservoir, three main zones, the, uh, the water zone, which we only have water, only 100% saturation with water. So from the store here, so for so the three uh, water level here, and then all this zone is 100% saturated with water. The first, the first um, uh, oil was able to invade this pool will happen at the, uh, uh, this pressure is called the, three, the threshold pressure. Okay, so at this level, so the water will be zero, 100% uh, from the free water level up to the threshold pressure, which is equivalent to the oil, uh, which is represented by the oil water contact. So it is as the oil water contact, it is the first drop of oil or the first part of oil that you can find and it will be the lowest um, saturation of oil in your reservoir. So the second zone here is the transition zone. So in this transition zone, actually we'll find the oil uh, saturation is increasing from this point up to the highest at the end. So from the threshold pressure, which is the minimum pressure required for the oil to invade the bore, and I will um, also discuss this later. So for this, uh, so we, we, will, uh, we will start with um, uh, uh, oil contact. So the smallest saturation of oil, and we will go to the top, the higher, the higher, um, uh, the higher we go, the higher the saturation of oil that we find, until we reach something called conate water saturation or irreducible water saturation, which is amount of water, the minimum amount of water. You cannot uh, uh, get rid of the rest of the water in your reservoir. So, so this is, will be the end of the transition zone. 
So there will be a variation or a changing in the saturation in this zone. The last zone is the oil-based zone. So uh, as you go outside, once you reach connect water saturation, you cannot reach a higher, uh, higher oil saturation. At this stage, it is the initial oil saturation. So once you open your reservoir, this is the amount, uh, the maximum amount of oil you will find in, uh, in this pool. So along this zone, this is a constant uh, oil saturation, no change in the, uh, um, I, am, I am proposing this is a static condition, okay? No production. So, you will find uh, there is no change in the oil saturation and no change in the water saturation because the, oil, the water saturation reaches its minimum. You cannot go lower than this, which is here water-free oil production. So I want also to discuss uh, what will happen at the bore scale. So we discussed uh, the uh, oil reservoir at a bigger, uh, a bigger scale. So what is actually happening at the bore scale? So your reservoir at the store before, before the migration of oil was 100% saturation, saturated with brine. Brine is the saline water, it's a salty water. So as the oil migrates from the source rock to, uh, to your reservoir, it will start to invade so, and displace the, oil, the, the water in front of the oil. So the, the oil will displace the brine. This is called the primary drainage. So in the primary drainage uh, step, so the oil is going to displace the water because at this case, you would expect that the pressure of oil will be higher than the pressure of water. So the pressure of oil, the non-witting phase, is higher, will be higher than the, um, the pressure of the water and we will got, uh, get positive capillary pressure and the oil will start to push the water on front of it and occupy, so it, um, it will be outside, pushed outside from, uh, from the pool, and the oil will fill this uh, pool. So, but the oil cannot enter this pool, else it, the pressure was enough to invade this pool. So how to know that the pressure is enough to invade the pool? From this expression, okay? So the relation between capillary pressure and the, the radius of the pool or, or the, of the throat, you will find that there is a minimum, so um, uh, the maximum, the higher, the, uh, the bigger the radius, the, what will happen, the lower the capillary pressure. So at a very small capillary pressure, if you, uh, the radius of your throat so, uh, was large, so you can, uh, the oil can invade at a small, it doesn't have to, uh, we, we don't have to, uh, to have a higher pr uh, pressure of oil. So the pressure difference between the oil and the brine, if it is very small, and the, the radius of the, the throat is very big, you can invert at, high, uh, at low capillary pressure. And this is the threshold of pressure. So if you have, um, if you know the radius of your throat and the bigger radius of your throat, you know that, the, 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 uh, you know that this bigger radius for the oil to invade this bigger radius, this is the smallest pressure required uh, for the oil to invade the biggest radius of throat in your reservoir, okay? I hope that you get, uh, you understand it. And I will uh, try to um, give an example on it. So for example, I want to calculate the threshold pressure. So this is the minimum pressure required by, to be exerted by the oil or the capillary pressure, the difference between oil and water to enter the first pore in your reservoir, okay? For the oil to start invading. So for example, we will use this, this pressure. So if you know the interfacial tension, if you know the contact angle, you are, we are talking about uh, brine and oil. And we know the radius of um, the biggest radius on your, uh, in your formation, so you can calculate the threshold pressure. So for the interfacial tension of oil and water, uh, it, is, it, is ra it is a range actually from two to six. So I will take a six to, to, uh, times two to the bar of minus two Newton uh, per meter. And if I assume that the biggest throat radius in our uh, in the core plug or our formation was 10 to the power of one uh, minus five, which is one micron. Actually, it is uh, it is large. You can you can find larger pores than this, but uh, uh, this is an average. Uh, for the contact angle, um, we can say that our contact angle between uh, the water, oil, and uh, in uh, on our formation would be 72 degree. So if you substitute all this value in this equation you will get that the capillary pressure that we have is uh, 3,700 Pascal, which is 0.39 PSI. This is the minimum, is, uh, or this is the threshold pressure, which is the minimum pressure 
below this pressure, if, you, if the capillary pressure was 0.2 PSI, no oil can invade in your reservoir. If the, uh, the applied pressure or the capillary pressure um, was 0.3, no oil can enter your reservoir. So the pressure for the oil to enter, the, uh, first to find, uh, we can find the first drop of oil at a capillary pressure of 0.39, which is the threshold pressure. So according to our primary dish, so we understand now there, there is a minimum, um, a minimum pressure that the oil has to exert. So according to our, um, uh, so the primary drainage, so our, or for this expression, so it is expected for the oil to fill the, the larger pool first, because at a very low pressure, you can fill the larger pool. So what will happen for non wet phase from one, from one uh, uh, pool to the other, to the other, and pushing a prime um, in front of it, as long as this pressure is enough to overcome the threshold pressure of your uh, of your pore okay so at this small pressure if the radius is large this the oil can invade if here the pressure uh, the radius is um, uh, or the radius of the throat is large the pressure uh, the oil can invade until it forces a very small uh, throat which need a higher capillary pressure to apply it will stop it will not uh, advance so the the oil will advance from one pore to the other pore and still advancing as long as this pressure is enough to invade this pore, okay? And this is called the invasion percolation, okay? So to what about if we want to fill more pores, uh, more uh, to, uh, to uh, like the squeeze the oil inside, what we have to do is to increase our capillary pressure. So if you increase the capillary pressure, it will be enough to overcome the, thro the threshold pressure for this throat and it will advance, okay? And for, uh, so the, uh, for example, uh, this throat is larger than this throat, so, the, uh, so it can advance at a smaller pressure here. Um, so it can, uh, for example, if this pressure equivalent uh, were, were uh, for example, 200 PSI, and for this was 100 PSI. So if you applied 100 PSI, the oil will advance through this throat, and it will not be able to advance through this throat, okay? And will not be able to push the water out of this throat. So, for the PSI, uh, uh, you have to increase the capillary pressure to 200 PSI to for the oil to be able to invade this uh, pool or and fill this pool. Okay. So for the pool network, it is filled in the order of size. So this is uh, actually so again, if you have, um, uh, for example, if the oil here was able to, uh, so it was have enough pressure to enter this throat, the oil will fill all the pool. But we don't advance here unless the pressure was enough to advance. So if, we, if it required a higher pressure, you have to apply more pressure. The oil will stop here and will not uh, advance to the next pore until the pressure is enough to invade this rod. Okay? And, uh, and go on. So it will advance for, uh, uh, from one, uh, from one pore to the other according to... Um, uh, so the capillary pressure that we measure in um, in the lab or whatever you are, uh, um, uh, uh, the way you're measuring, it is a relation between the capillary pressure and the water saturation. So for the capillary, uh, uh, capillary pressure and water saturation as percent, so, and capillary pressure, whatever the units you are using, um, okay. And there is two types of capillary pressure, the drainage capillary pressure and imbibition capillary pressure. I discussed uh, the oil migration from the, uh, the origin, uh, so the source rock to, uh, to the reservoir, it is a primary drainage, okay? So this is what we, what we will find here. So this is a primary drainage. As long as you, um, you increase, so as uh, you increase the capillary pressure here, more oil are forced out of the, uh, the pores. So you will get lower saturation of oil, lower saturation of oil, um, I'm sorry, for, of water. Lower saturation of water, low, uh, lower saturation of water until, you know, so there is a, uh, a higher step increase, increase in the pressure until you will find whatever the pressure you are increasing, no, no change in the water saturation. So there is two expressions here. Um, uh, I want to show you in this curve. So what is the threshold pressure? I, uh, I told you before, this is the minimum pressure for the oil to, to start to invading. So as you increase in, in your experiment, as you increase the capillary pressure, you will not find any oil uh, or any, only any change in the water saturation until you reach the, the threshold pressure. So the threshold pressure in this curve, you can find it here. So this is the value of the 
threshold uh, uh, three pressure or the displacement pressure. So this is a value. At this value, it is the oil-water contact. You can find this at, at this value of displacement pressure or threshold pressure. You will find in your, in your reservoir the oil-water contact. So what else we want to define here? It is the conate water saturation, which is the minimum amount of water that you can find in your reservoir. You cannot go lower than this. This, are, uh, this is a characteristic of your reservoir. You cannot find a lower amount of whatever the pressure uh, you are applying in oil, whatever, whatever um, the capillary pressure you are, uh, the capillary pressure difference or the pressure difference you are applying between the pressure of oil and pressure of water, you cannot get this water to go outside of the booth. You cannot force this oil. So at this, um, this point, we call this conate water saturation or irreducible water saturation. At this saturation, the, uh, so one minus uh, irreducible water saturation or Y minus conate water saturation equal to the initial oil in place, okay? So the initial oil saturation for this, you can find it. And the equivalent pressure, so the equivalent pressure at uh, where you can find the conate water saturation or the end of your transition zone, you will find it from here. So at the pressure where no more, it is um, the first conate water for, uh, formation of conate water saturation. So this is conate water saturation. You will find your pressure, equivalent pressure here. Okay. Hope that you um, are catching up with me. So uh, for, uh, so how this capillary pressure apply to our reservoir here? So the free water level is here, is the X axis here, okay. And then you will start to find 100% saturation oil water contact will be at the, the threshold pressure. Okay, I showed you before. So this is the threshold pressure. So this is the threshold pressure. So you will find it, um, uh, you get the value of this capillary pressure and using the, the relation between height and the capillary pressure, you can uh, transfer this capillary pressure to height. Okay, so again for the conate water saturation, so you will, you will be able to determine your end zone at the conate water saturation, the end of the transition zone, okay? And after this will be oil-based zone and you can find the saturation of the oil-based zone uh, or um, the initial water uh, oil saturation for you uh, from this conate water saturation, okay? So what else happening? During your production, sometimes you do water flooding. And in this case, it is uh, imbibition. It's called imbibition. We know that the reservoir and the origin was 100% saturation uh, saturated with brine, and then the oil started to displace this brine uh, in the primary drainage step. So the oil displacing the brine in the primary drainage during the migration of oil. So uh, and this you will get at the end of this uh, primary drainage you will get the initial oil saturation. After this, you will decide to produce from your, your, uh, your reservoir and uh, you do water flooding and there will be imbibition where the, the brine is the oil out. So you cannot get 100% reduction in the oil or even um, you, will find you can leave like 60% of the original oil in place um, uh, without any production. And what will happen here is the oil will be residually trapped in your pores uh, in the rock and the brine will be the main, uh, uh, the main, uh, the dominant fluid and uh, all the brine, uh, the oil will be just a very unconnected, um, this uh, unconnected distributed uh, inside your uh, reservoir. So this is the imperfection and you can express it uh, um, also uh, uh, if you force now, you will, uh, you will, uh, this is spontaneous imperfection. We don't have to apply higher pressure uh, for, uh, for water. So starting from the conate water, there will be spontaneous imperfection of brine. So, and then it will, you will force the brine inside your reservoir until you reach like uh, whatever uh, the pressure you are increasing, you will not get any oil out of your pores. And this is the residual oil saturation, okay? So this is the initial oil, so one, one minus uh, the water saturation, it will be irreduce, um, the initial water saturation, and this will be, at the end of the imperfection will be the residual saturation. Okay, so this is the, the residual oil saturation. So one minus uh, the saturation of oil because uh, of water here. Okay, so this is because this is the saturation of water. 
So a, car a characteristic of the capillary pressure curve, we have three characteristics of the capillary pressure curve, which is the capillary pressure hysteresis, pore size distribution, and capillary pressure permeability. I will talk uh, briefly on this. So as you can find here for this capillary pressure, the drainage have a curve, and this is the curve for inhibition. So how come they are not the same curve, you, or they are not f following the same path? Why? So why you would expect that um, uh, for the same uh, saturation of, uh, of water, okay, at the same saturation of water, you will find the drainage capillary pressure is higher than the inhibition capillary pressure. So why? This is actually because uh, of the contact angle hysteresis. So if you remember from part one in the contact angle, I talked about the receding contact angle as the advanced contact angle. So the receding contact angle is mainly it is uh, the drainage. Okay. So where the, uh, the, uh, the oil is forcing the water. So it is a primary drainage. So this expresses the receding contact angle. So it is a smaller contact angle compared to the contact angle during inhibition where the water is pushing the oil outside, okay? So due to this difference, and if you remember, this is the capillary pressure um, uh, uh, equation, okay? And if you have the interfacial tension between water and oil, it will not change. The contact angle between water and oil and the surface, your surface, it will not change, but the oil, um, I'm sorry, uh, uh, the radius will not change, but the contact angle is changing according to the state of the displacement. If it is primary drainage, then so, so in this case, the contact angle will be the receding one. So it will be smaller. So the cosine will, uh, the cosine, um, uh, cosine the angle, if, it, if the angle is small, the cosine will be larger. So the capillary pressure will be larger. If it is inhibition, so we will uh, we'll, um, substitute here with the um, advanced contact angle, which is larger contact angle, so the, uh, the capillary pressure will be lower, okay? So this difference or the capillary pressure hysteresis is due to the difference in the uh, contact angle uh, during the primary drainage or during the inhibition. So I want you to, catch, uh, to, to, uh, to catch the expression, what is the primary drainage, what is the inhibition, um, uh, also what is meant by invasion percolation, the threshold pressure. So this is some definition I want you to understand, and this will show you the importance of the capillary pressure curve. So the bore size distribution. So how can we get an indication from the capillary pressure about the bores? If you remember here, the, again, this, uh, this um, equation for capillary pressure, so we have the relation between the capillary pressure and the radius, okay? So the higher the radius, what will happen to the capillary pressure? The lower the capillary pressure, okay? Okay, so imagine that your uh, core, that you have a small core, and all the core have the same radius. All the cores have, are the same throat, okay? All the same, uh, maybe one micro. All the core are one micron throat. What will happen? We say that there is a threshold of pressure. So at one micron, the, the threshold of pressure that we calculated before was 0.39 um, 0 .39, uh, P, uh, uh, PSI, okay? So if we apply this capillary pressure, 0 0.39 PSI, what will happen to the oil? The oil will invade all the pores, okay? So what will happen is we will go from one to conate water saturation at, the, at one capillary pressure, okay? at one capillary pressure measurement. So what will happen you to your curve? The your curve will be horizontal, okay? So, so the horizontal, the curve, this means that the, the pores are the same, are nearly the same size. So there is no, uh, no wide distribution of pore, no variation in your pore size. So the, the more horizontal your curve, the narrower the pore size distribution. But the stepper size here means that you have to increase Okay, so if uh, uh, so, you uh, at your threshold pressure, you will fill the one micron radius. Okay, but now you filled all the one micron radius um, uh, pores. Uh, 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 what will happen? You the, the the advancing of oil will stop. Okay, because it invaded all the mi uh, all the micro, all the one micron size uh, radius. So there is more smaller. So maybe there is a half micron, so it needs more, more, uh, more capillary pressure to invade. And then it will, you have to apply to increase your capillary pressure. As you increase the capillary pressure, it will fill all uh, the sizes. But there is other size, it's a small distribution. So, so a small portion of your oil is invading uh, the different sizes. So this is different sizes causing us to have a stepper 
uh, distribution of uh, of capillary pressure, which means there is a border uh, pore size distribution. Okay. So what about permeability? Actually, the permeability calls your if you have the same type of uh, of uh, core, but with different permeability, with different uh, starting like from the higher permeability with K1 and the lower permeability with K5, you will find that if you have the same as the same uh, um, uh, rock type, but with different permeability, okay, you will find that the the the, the same the same shape of the capillary, your capillary pressure curve, but it is shifting to the top. So as the uh, as the permeability decreases, you will find a shift in your uh, your curve uh, to the uh, to upward and uh, to the right. Okay, so you can get an indication. So the capillary pressure can give you an indication of uh, the pore size distribution, an indication of the uh, permeability. One of our important measurement also is the lever TVG function, and you can directly measure it from uh, the capillary pressure here. So this is the equation for uh, the lever TJ function. The nice thing about the lever TJ function is it, you can compare. Uh, if you get, you have one formation and you get uh, your core sample from different location in your formation, okay? You would expect that every core have a different property, have a different permeability, have a different porosity. Uh, so you cannot compare, have different pore size distribution. So you cannot compare um, uh, your, your capillary pressure curve from this different, um, uh, uh, different um, uh, uh, location or for different rocks but it is the same formation. So what you can uh, do, so liver TJ function has accommodated all these variable of permeability, porosity, all the state change in one curve. So you can, you can use this curve, curve to compare your, uh, your capillary pressure or your uh, saturation. Uh, so here, you will find here. So this is a, a showing a curve, uh, so liver TJ function on, uh, on, uh, on the Y axis and the water saturation on the X axis. And this is a mercury uh, injection, and this is different uh, uh, for ever, for different uh, uh, rock sample or capillary pressure curve for different rock sample from the North Sea of the same formation, and you will find it is taking the same trend. So you can compare. So you can uh, now compare different um, different rock from the same formation um, in, on the same curve. You cannot do, do this for the capillary pressure. You will not get um, an indication of what is happening. So the river TJ function is a way you can express, you can compare um, uh, or have the same result because they are following the same trend. So again, before starting talking about the experimental work, I want uh, to point out what is the importance of your capillary pressure curve. So through your capillary pressure curve, you can know the vertical distribution of your uh, fluid or your, uh, in your reservoir. You can also express this in height. So you can know the, um, uh, whatever the height of the, free water, uh, uh, the, free, uh, the oil water contact. You can identify the height of the, uh, the location of uh, the oil water contact through, through using this equation, the relation between height and the capillary pressure. Okay. Also, you can uh, estimate the thickness of the transition zone, which is uh, the, uh, between the threshold pressure and the pressure corresponding to the conate water saturation. Okay, and you can express it in height. Also, you can know the irreducible water saturation, and from this irreducible water saturation, you can know the amount of uh, or the initial oil saturation that you have in your reservoir before any production. And finally, you can get accurate uh, um, uh, measurement of your pore size distribution, and I will show this in more detail using a mercury injection capillary pressure, okay, experiment. So for the experimental work, we have actually two types of experiments that I will, uh, I will discuss here. So the porous plate, we will show the primary drainage using the porous plate. So there is two types of porous plates, the patch porous plate and the individual core cool, uh, cool holder porous plate. And the other experiment is the mercury injection capillary pressure, and I will show uh, this in a separate section. So in this experimental work, I will show you how the porous plate experiments are conducted. So let's start with the patch uh, porous plate first, but I want you to know what is meant by the porous plate. So in general, porous plate is a, is a disc I will show you in the video. Um, so it is a disc, it is strongly water wet. 
So it will allow only water to invade it. It will not let any air or any oil as, as an unwitting phase to invade it or to break through it. Okay. There is different rating for this, um, for this uh, uh, porous plate according to the displacement pressure that you want to reach. Uh, it can be 15, it can be 10, it can be 5 bar. Okay, what I am going to show you in the video is the 15 bar. Uh, this is what, uh, what I have. So, so the higher the, uh, the displacement pressure rating, the lower the permeability of the water through this uh, porous plate. So it will take very long time for this water to, uh, uh, because you want to, um, this is 15 bar, so the radius is very, very tight um, uh, uh, pores. Uh, so it is harder for the water to pass through, but the water pass through uh, fine, but it takes time. So for the patch uh, porous plate here, it is conducted at ambient condition and it is only used for air as a non-wetting phase and the brine for, as a wetting phase. Okay, so this is the, the shape is like a container here with a cover. Okay, and you built a different core plugs. Uh, you can use regular or irregular core plugs because it's depending on the weight. You cannot, it, it doesn't depend on the amount of water collected. So you can measure the advances about this, um, the advantage about this system is that you can use several samples together. You, uh, uh, like you can put eight core plugs inside this, um, uh, uh, this uh, patch porous plate uh, without, um, at the same time, okay? And also, it is uh, as I told you, it is oil, uh, air uh, prime experiment only, and it is not not many uh, not recommended because you are uh, just depending on weighting your sample, and uh, if some of the grain in your sample that um, uh, uh, was uh, removed, and you will uh, you will get uh, an error in your weight measurement, and accordingly the oil the water saturation. So this is the internal of this container. So the internal of this porous uh, patch porous plate. So this is the internal. Okay. So uh, the air in injected here. So your core plug is is placed here on top of the porous plate. So this is the porous plate, and your core plug. So this is only showing uh, showing uh, showing one porous um, one uh, uh, core plug, but you can have up to eight core plug. So and also you have to place filter paper here to make sure that the water, uh, there is no loss in the water contact. So the water is advancing from this core to the, por uh, the porous uh, plate uh, in, a, in a continuous manner, okay? So, uh, uh, so you place air, um, uh, you inject air at a, at a uh, known pressure, at a very low pressure, and you, uh, the air will displace the brine out through the porous plate and uh, you will find that the brine is coming out here. But you don't measure this volume. You don't, you just in an indication that uh, you reach at the end of this, um, all, uh, at this certain capillary pressure, all the pores are invaded with air. Okay. But first you have to weight your sample. Before starting this experiment, you have to saturate first your sample, weight it while the sample is dry, saturate it, place it in a baker full of brine, saturate it, and then take it out of the, uh, the, uh, the baker, weight it in, um, on the balance, and then place it in here, okay? And then you will apply the pressure here at the same time capillary pressure. So. So at a certain capillary pressure here, and the water will be displaced. So what we, what uh, what you will see here? So point by point, you increase the pressure, and then you will you will find some of the brine coming out until no more brine is coming out. You will open your setup, take your sample, weight it. So what will happen here? Because you applied a certain capillary pressure at this capillary pressure, the air displays the brine, there was primary drainage, so the air displays the brine, and the brine is collected from the top here, from the bottom here, until no more brine is displaced, you reach the end point for this capillary pressure, okay? So you want to know how uh, the volume of brine that was displaced from your core, so you will take out your core, uh, uh, weight it in your, um, on, on, on the balance, I showed every step, uh, like the weighting and, uh, and the saturation, or in the part one uh, lecture. So, and this will, and this will be one point. So you will calculate uh, because due to the difference in the weight before the 100% saturation, 
and after uh, the first capillary pressure, there will be a weight difference. This weight difference, if you have the density of the prime, so you can calculate the volume of this prime. And you can get the saturation, uh, the volume of the, your prime, divided by the pore volume, you will get the water saturation, okay? So you get the water saturation here, and then you, another point here, and another point, you increase the pressure in steps until you reach the, um, the pressure where no more prime is, uh, is uh, displaced from, here, from, uh, from your course here, okay? And then you, uh, this is the end of the experiment. So you will uh, draw this curve, the capillary pressure curve with, uh, uh, versus uh, the waiting phase saturation, which is uh, in our case, the prime. You cannot do the, uh, this for individual uh, core. Um, you cannot uh, know the amount of prime for individual core because you are using uh, eight or, or, or uh, many core plugs. So you don't know uh, which, um, uh, what is the amount of prime uh, coming out from which core, okay? And after the end, you have to uh, clean your core using then stray. Um, I'm sorry, not clean. Uh, you have to, once you reach the irreducible saturation and you weighted your sample, you get an indication of what is the, the irreducible water saturation. If you want to double check what, what you have, uh, what is the amount of water, uh, we can use then stray where you can know the amount of water remaining in your core and compare it with, the, with what you get here. So it is just this point can be compared with uh, using Denisteric. And after this, you can um, saturate, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, clean your core using succulate and dry it using uh, an oven, a vacuum oven. The next, um, the second porous plate metal in the individual porous plate core holder. You remember for the past, uh, so for the patch process, you will, uh, at each step, you open your system, take the core out, weight it, and uh, place it again, and close the system uh, again, pressurize it again, depressurize, take the, the, the core out, weight it, and, uh, and return it back. So it is um, uh, uh, yeah, somehow time consuming. Also, you cannot use oil, you're just using the brine. Uh, so, um, there is other method which is called individual porous plate. You are using a core holder, your core holder. Uh, I showed you before the core holder and I am going to show you how I connected uh, in, uh, or set up my core holder in the lab, okay? In the next couple of slides. So in your core holder, this is a regular core plug and this is a porous plate and this is the end uh, plug. And all the uh, everything are put in the, uh, in the core holder here, and there is a confining pressure, no contact between the confining pressure and uh, what is uh, the fluid inside uh, this um, uh, this core plug. Okay. So the interesting thing about this is uh, you can you you will use only one sample at a time, one sample. You cannot uh, use several samples, just one sample. But you don't have to take out this sample at every stage. So just so you can draw your capillary pressure at one go without any, um, uh, uh, any t uh, disassembling of the setup because it is hard really. This test, uh, the interesting thing is that you can use oil or, uh, or air as a non-wetting phase or whatever non-wetting phase you want to test. And the wetting phase is your prime or whatever other wetting phase you want to test. Um, uh, also, you can conduct it at, at reservoir condition and at high, pr uh, with, uh, high pressure and high temperature, uh, whatever you uh, uh, want, but it is time consuming because it takes a long time. Uh, or the drainage actually takes very, very long time. So let's start the video. Hopefully I will do this. So um, I, I want you, the, what you are seeing here in, uh, in the video is the component of, is different component for the core, uh, the Hassler type core holder. Um, as you can see here, this is uh, uh, the core plug. Uh, as I told you, it is 1.5 inch in diameter and the length of this core plug is, um, is three inches. This is a standard type core holder, uh, core, I'm sorry, core plug, okay? And what is uh, displayed here in, um, is the porous plate. Okay, so this porous plate, uh, I'm sorry, okay. So, so this porous plate, I know this type has a hole inside, this um, hole through it, drill through it, but in general, the, the usual type of porous plate is not, uh, it doesn't have any hole drilled through it. This is a custom uh, made porous plate and I will not go through why we drilled hole through, um, a hole through it. I maybe I will discuss it in a, a very rapid, um, uh, 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 notes uh, during uh, the other experiment. So, 
what I, uh, so it is the same size as the, uh, as the core, as the same diameter as uh, your core, uh, core plug, and it is rated uh, 15 bar. So you can see here, it is written 15 bar ceramic disc. It just allow only the brine to pass through it, and no oil or, or air can pass through this. It no, cannot break through it. So in general, this is placed like this in your core uh, core holder, and uh, you, if you inject the brine, so the brine will be injected through here and pass through the porous plate. If you are injecting oil, the oil will will just displace the brine. Only the brine is coming out of this porous plate, and no oil will be able to come. So it uh, the 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 uh, the edge for your um, oil. Sorry. So the edge, the last, uh, the last uh, part, the further part for the oil to travel is to the, up to this end. It cannot go through the porous plate. Okay. So we know also one of the component, important components for the Hassler type core holder is this um, uh, end plug. So it is, it has uh, growths uh, through it to ensure that there is nice distribution of your fluids while you are injecting. So it is placed like this, and the line are used for injection of uh, the brine or for the oil, and these groves will make sure that there is nice distribution in your core block and no one, no, nothing is uh, uh, um, uninvaded with brine or not saturated with brine or oil, okay? And there is two, uh, two in the block, one of this uh, in the block, and there is other in the block, and everything are put inside the Viton sleeve, as I will show you. So it contains two holes here, this, uh, this hole for the injection of different fluid, if you want one of the board to measure the pressure or one of the board to collect uh, one for CO2, one for the gas, one, one, whatever, one for uh, brine, one for oil. So whatever the connection of setup that you are using. Here, this is our uh, core, um, uh, the body of your core holder. It is a ho hollow cylinder, okay? Where everything are placed uh, through here. And this, you can find here, the small, small hole. I'm sorry. So this port is for uh, the injection of the capillary, uh, or, 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 um, uh, for the injection of uh, confining pressure uh, fluid, okay? And there is other hole here for the injection of the capillary pressure uh, uh, for the air. I will discuss this uh, in more detail in the next video. So your core here is, you will wrap your core with BTFE and aluminum foil, and then you will place it in this Viton sleeve. So this is make sure that there is no uh, contact between the confining pressure and the fluid inside your, uh, your core. Uh, and you will place the, your porous plate and then the end block here. Okay, and then the other end block. Yeah, just um, I, I, I'm like demonstrating with one hand and video taping um, with the other hand. So you have to just bear with me for this video. So everything now is um, uh, will go through this body. Okay, this cylinder. Okay, we place it inside. And then you will screw it, screw this, uh, this cap here through this um, this will make sure there is a pressure on, on, on both sides of your uh, core. Sometimes you have to tilt it to just to squeeze it and, and, uh, and screw it. So this will make sure, again, that there is a pressure according to uh, the uh, vertical pressure. And this is also a cap, you have to screw it here. This will make sure that also there is a pressure in your um, uh, on the end plug. It is hand tight. Everything is hand tight. You don't have to squeeze it. And this is the thing I like about this uh, Hustler type core holder. It is from Core Lab. I um, there is different type of core holders. I was having one like I have. It's a nightmare. So this uh, other cap. And you have also through a screw it through all the way, and it is hand tight. 
everything now is set up and your core, ho um, uh, core holder is ready uh, for your flooding experiment. So, uh, as, uh, so this is for the air. You, once you inject this, you will use this port for, uh, to connect it with the high pressure uh, injection pump. So I will show you here, this is the pump. So um, this is actually a nice pump to operate at constant pressure and constant flow. So and I have an accumulator inside, but it's a very expensive pump. Um, and there is, um, I'm sorry, so, so the injected, uh, the injected uh, flow uh, fills the uh, annular space around the core, um, uh, the vital sleeve. And uh, because there is air occupying this place, so you have to get rid of this air. You don't want it will have uh, uh, can make some error in your uh, pressure measurements. So, um, so you will take uh, um, just to place your core holder here and then get rid of your uh, of the air uh, using this valve. Once all the air are coming out and you just getting wo uh, water, because I would prefer to use uh, water. Okay. Um, for uh, as a as a confining pressure uh, fluid, uh, because oil will have um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's messy. Okay, uh, but if you if you ha you need to uh, to use oil, so just go on and use it. But it is uh, really messy. Um, what you are um, uh, you can you are seeing here is the accumulator. Okay, so this is the accumulator and it is connected um, uh, to the high pressure pump. This is one type of pump. This is a constant flow, as uh, slightly cheaper than the other uh, Esco pump, um, and uh, uh, you will fill the prime through this plastic tubing. And uh, through this piston, this is a dual piston. Uh, make sure it is uh, some, uh, uh, continuous fluid, and uh, the the high pressure uh, uh, brine. Uh, I'm sorry, water is injected through this accumulator. Okay. Uh, uh, for this, you have to uh, to take care of your piston. You don't want to uh, ruin it. Uh, so it is important to use the accumulator. It's better to use the accumulator. Uh, because uh, and just use um, uh, just deionized water for your injection and your accumulator have so the accumulator have a, a floating piston inside one place will be uh, um, uh, deionized water the other will be brine or uh, or oil or gas and then you will inject uh, using uh, the pump to inject your um, uh, your your other fluid in your in the core holder and they are not on contact. So the, the deionized water is not contacting with the oil or not contacting with the, uh, with the gas or uh, whatever. But, and it is actually also nice, uh, nice, nice accumulator from DCI. So this is a connection and you can also connect your, uh, the different colors, uh, gas cylinders, and you can use different valves. Uh, you have to build your setup um, and uh, if you want gas or if you want uh, oil, whatever the fluid that you want to inject to your core, you have to use your accumulator. Okay. So, um, uh, so we reach it to the end of the videos now. We will go uh, back to our slides. So now you uh, should uh, get a nice understanding of the core holder and um, and uh, what is going on. Actually, the core hold uh, 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 the core holder or Hassler type core holder is very important. You are you can use in many many experiments in the oil and gas, like um, measuring the saturation, measuring uh, sometimes it is used for measuring porosity as well. Um, uh, you can use it for measure uh, capillary pressure uh, experiment, for enhanced oil recovery experiment, for um, uh, for the permeability, gas and liquid permeability, so it is uh, resistivity, so CO2 storage, so it is different, uh, it's used in different type of uh, experiment. I'm not sure if... Uh... Okay. Uh, so what happened here? So you will inject um, uh, uh, your, your, uh, uh, your oil, for example, if you, it's a primary drainage, you inject your oil, and you are only getting brine out of this uh, place. No oil can go through this porous plate. So only brine are getting out and you can measure it using graduated cylinder or constant pressure receiving pump, depending on the technique that you are using. But if you go, are going to use a graduated cylinder for measurement, you have to um, use a, a back pressure um, uh, back pressure regulator, and it is shown in the video. I didn't, I didn't uh, focus on it, but it is shown with the uh, with the green clock. 
uh, on on the the Hassler type uh, uh, core holder uh, setup, it was inside uh, um, uh, back pressure with um, regulator with a green clock. So in a step, so uh, we will go through uh, step by step how we conduct we can conduct this um, uh, this uh, uh, experiment to measure primary drainage curve. So um, you have to prepare your core. This is your core, and you have to wrap it with BTFE and then aluminium and place it in a vitamin sleeve. And this is uh, another type of uh, of hazard type core holder. This type was not is uh, with, uh, the other type I'm showing in the video is uh, is um, is nicer, is easy to handle. So uh, the other the second step is to saturate everything with brine. You know, for the capillary pressure, you are mimicking what is going on in your reservoir. So first, your reservoir was saturated 100% with brine. So what you want to do this. So for your core plug, you have to saturate it with five bore volume of brine. So you are injecting five bore volume of brine. Uh, then you will start the primary drainage step where you just uh, um, adjust the oil is injected and uh, and the display the oil displays the brine out of this porous plate, okay? And this is the setup. So here, this is your core holder connected to injection pump, and this is a receiving pump. Instead of this receiving pump, you can install here a pack pressure um, a regulator and a graduated cylinder, but you have to account for the compressibility. And this is the confining pressure uh, pump, okay? So it is separated here. So, for this, during this stage, so the oil is injected at uh, uh, a step-by-step -step increase in the, in the capillary pressure. So we will start with a very small capillary pressure. For example, uh, if you can start with 0.5 PSI difference, you, you go on a start. If you can go lower, just to go lower. Um, so you, you can adjust it according to the delta P and both uh, bumps are running in a constant pressure mode, okay? So what will happen here is the oil is injected, so it is allowed to, inje uh, to inject it, and it is displacing all the brine uh, uh, out of the core at this certain capillary pressure from invading only the pores that allow that um, this, capillary, this capillary pressure will allow the oil to invade, okay? And you only receive only brine from this core, and you can, um, uh, from the pore, uh, pore plug, and now you can mon uh, monitor the volume. So you know the volume oil displays only the water, okay? So, uh, uh, so the, um, if you have like one milli of oil, you will receive, uh, uh, entering the core, you will receive one milli of brine. So the, the, uh, the brine that you are receiving here is representative of the amount or the volume of oil that entered inside your core plug. So, so what uh, what we are uh, we do here is to we are going to monitor uh, the volume received in this pump versus time. Okay, if you are using graduated cylinder, so you have to do this yourself. Um, if this pump is connected, so it can be connected uh, data log to your computer, so you can monitor uh, uh, the the change in volume with time in uh, in this uh, in this pump um, uh, uh, just to, uh, using computer. So the, what you find here is that um, as you uh, as I saw the, the oil is invading uh, the pores one by one until you reach that all the pores at this certain size equivalent to this capillary pressure are invaded. Okay, and you will reach a plateau here. I'm not sure you can see. So and you are reaching a plateau here where no more prime is coming out. So this means that at this certain capillary pressure you reach um, uh, equilibrium. Okay, so you have to monitor uh, the amount of, uh, of brine. So the amount of brine or the water saturation, because this is only one point on your curve. I, I want to, to just to show. So what, I, what you uh, have done here is only one point. So it is the capillary pressure versus one saturation of uh, water. Okay. So how to calculate this uh, water saturation? It is the bore volume of your core take away the volume of uh, prime received in this, uh, in this pump. So what, are, what, what will happen here is the, the, this, the volume of uh, prime received in this pump is equivalent to the volume of oil, okay? So what you are getting here is the, uh, the volume of water inside your core divided by the bore volume. So you now can get 
the measures the saturation, the water saturation. And then uh, for the oil saturation, if you can just take one, uh, uh, the initial water saturation, um, you can, uh, it is maybe one minus uh, water saturation, or you can uh, just the volume of water here divided by the water volume, okay? So this capillary uh, pressure curve is nice. Uh, you can say it, uh, you can, uh, there are many, many uh, type, uh, like uh, core type like Doddington, Keton, Indiana, uh, everyone have a different, uh, a different color, okay? And uh, for the Keton one, I want you to look at the, uh, the rainbow type uh, blue uh, symbol. This represents the Keton. I showed you the photo of the Keton and it has double porosity. Uh, so you can find at a very, very low pressure, you get just um, uh, like a, a, a very low water saturation. So this means that there is a um, uh, um, very big uh, pour, uh, very big wider pour. You can, uh, you can see uh, through the micro CT scan, uh, scanner, you can see it has a, a very big pour. Um, uh, then followed by a small board because whatever you, the change you have in this capillary pressure, you cannot force many uh, 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 high amount of water to come out. Okay, so that's the water a very low water saturation. Oil invade all the pores of the ketone at a very low pressure, and we will still uh, see the, the mercury injection capillary pressure for this ketone, and we will show how the pore size distributed in this ketone. So it can take many days actually. So this is one point you will increase your capillary pressure uh, for um, uh, your increase your capillary pressure uh, uh, and you will get different saturation because uh, oil will invade more and more pores in this um, uh, in your uh, in this step. Okay. Uh, so uh, you you are showing here different uh, different uh, received amount of uh, prime received in uh, the receiving pump. And you can see the time consumed. So this is a, a, a very, um, this is a high pressure, high capillary pressure, uh, uh, higher volume of water saturation. Okay, uh, and it takes the smaller, uh, shorter time. For this is a, a slightly high, higher capillary pressure. This is uh, uh, this is lower capillary pressure. This is uh, the lowest capillary pressure, and you can find that it takes like uh, 450 uh, hours more than. And it's, it's 50 hours, 500 hours to, to reach um, uh, equilibrium. So uh, this is only one point. So it is curve representing one point. So it is time consuming, but um, it's important. Okay. Uh, you can also draw uh, the Liberty J function because you have the capillary pressure. Uh, of course, the interfacial tension contact angle is known. Permeability, you can measure it for your core. And, pores play, uh, and porosity, you are, it is known because actually you have to know it to measure the pore volume. So uh, Liberty J function, this is for, for uh, mercury injection um, and also for different type of sandstone. I can compare uh, in a different condition uh, uh, on the same Liberty J function. Okay, uh, and it is taking the same, the same trend. Now to mercury injection capillary pressure and pore size distribution. Actually for the mercury, it's, uh, mercury is, uh, is a hard to, uh, to handle and it's not every lab uh, have a mercury, it is toxic. Um, so I would, uh, I, uh, so I, I was, uh, we didn't do our uh, mercury injection capillary pressure um, uh, in our labs, we just uh, was uh, using Weatherford uh, labs to do this mercury. So the mercury injection capillary pressure and the data, I, it is uh, measured in Weatherford lab. So uh, mercury injection uh, techniques um, can be used to measure the capillary pressure uh, versus saturation of the, uh, of the mercury. So we have a curve of capillary pressure. We also have two curves of poor, uh, poor throat size distribution. It is a destructive test. For all the other tests I showed, uh, it is non-destructive because you just inject in oil, water, and you can clean your core. Uh, but for uh, this, um, uh, this mercury test, the mercury cannot get out, uh, rid uh, of all the mercury in your core and the, the, your core uh, will be damaged. So it is a destructive test. Um, it is a fast, it, uh, it is fast. It doesn't, um, it doesn't take a long time as uh, the, the case of porous plate, with the porous plate. But uh, as I told you, mercury is uh, toxic. So here uh, you can find here, this is the injection bomb of the mercury. So this is injection bomb, okay? And there is a, a, a transparent window here. You, will, you can uh, monitor the volume, the injected volume of mercury. And this is the where you will place your sample. 
there will be gas uh, cylinder to make uh, pressure and uh, there will be pressure reading here pressure reading to know the pressure because it is a capillary pressure you have to know the pressure of the injected mercury to because you are measuring uh, pressure versus volume or versus saturation okay so in general mercury is the non wetting phase and air is the wetting phase for your uh, cool and of course mercury will invade the larger pore first um, at a very small capillary pressure only the larger pores will be invaded and um, you have to record uh, the pressure versus saturation. So you just inject uh, inject mercury and uh, um, uh, uh, certain volume of um, uh, you apply pressure. You uh, you uh, you monitor the volume of the mercury. You get a saturation and you get uh, you measure a point. Okay. So the capillary pressure versus the saturation of mercury. So this is what we get here. Okay. So this is a Perea uh, sand, uh, sandstone um, uh, uh, mercury injection capillary pressure curve. So this uh, on the y axis this is uh, mercury pressure and on the x axis this is the mercury saturation and you can find as we increase the pressure uh, the saturation of mercury decrease uh, increase okay because it is an unwitting phase what we were showing before is the water was the wetting phase so the wetting phase is decreasing but if we are showing the oil one it will be increasing okay so you can see this, uh, this curve is uh, slightly horizontal. So you would expect that the pore uh, the poor size distribution will be up to 50% of the mercury is invading approximately the same pore size. I would expect it before I, uh, I'm going to show this. And then it, there will be a stable rise. Okay, let's see what it, um, so this is actually what is uh, what is happening here. So you can uh, convert this capillary pressure to radius using this uh, equation. So you can monitor the, me the mercury saturation versus the pool slot distribution. Um, uh, you will find here 50% of the mercury saturation is invading like 10 micron. So the pores in, uh, are distributed in like 10 micron, up to 50% of the bore volume are in the range of 10 micron okay and then starting from uh, uh, from this it is uh, like it's, uh, uh, gradually filling a different size of pores we have actually three uh, three sizes of pores uh, macro uh, meso and uh, micro okay so for the micro type it will be like larger macro type it will be larger than one micro okay so this is for one micron. So in the macro type, it will be larger than one micron. For the meso type, it will be from one micron to 0.1 micron okay, in this range. And for uh, the micro type, it will be larger than uh, or smaller. I'm sorry, smaller than 0.1 micron. Okay. This is um, the capillary pressure for ketone. Um, uh, the interesting thing is how to read this capillary pressure curve. It's important not only to measure it, but also know how to read it, okay? So as you can see here for uh, the mercury capillary pressure, so this is a, uh, the capillary pressure of mercury and the saturation of mercury, and you can find two horizontal um, uh, uh, places here for the capillary pressure, which means that this, this ketone, have, uh, ketone type have two distribution of pores one larger pore okay because the mercury uh, fills the larger pore first okay so up to 0.4 percent of the mercury was invading at actually the same uh, or nearly the same um, uh, the same size of pores so you will find here the 0.4 percent of the mercury saturation here is uh, occupying like um, 10 micro 10 micron pore size and smaller and the larger Okay. Then there will be start uh, start to invade one by one pores. So there is some distribution of the pores here, and again, starting from 0.6 up to the end, 40% are okay, the same size, ranging the same size, micro. Right? Here, so starting 0.65, saturation of mercury is occupying the same pore, uh, pore size. This is a horizontal line, okay? And the other curve here is the impipation. Yeah, so it is not complete, but it is impipation. So this is, uh, and the impipation for the mercury is just to um, uh, desaturate uh, the, uh, the pool from, uh, 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 the mercury from your system. Okay. 
there is another type of poor size distribution where you will find here um, uh, using this relation, which is the incremental incre uh, increase in uh, saturation. So this is the saturation. This is the incremental increase in saturation. And this is a log uh, radius. And your radius is calculated from the capillary pressure. And this is the difference. Okay. So this can be drawn in on the y-axis and this, uh, and versus the poor slope. Uh, radius and you will find that for this for Perea sandstone and this for ketone uh, uh, carbonate for the ketones there is a two distribution two distributions here poor distribution one uh, larger than 10 which is the maximum the, the higher amount of uh, poor size distribution was in the range of 10 micron and higher for the ketone and the other one is very very uh, uh, small or um, so uh, but a group of uh, microporosity for this uh, ketone and it is smaller than 0.1 in the micro uh, range. And you, if you remember the photos that I showed in the uh, part one uh, lecture, you can uh, see through the micro CT uh, uh, scanner, larger pore and inside the grain itself of the ketone, it is around the grain, there is a small micro pores. For the Berea, it is uh, nicely distributed uh, around 10 micro, uh, macro, and it is uh, for the Berea sandstone, it is a standard pinch type and the standard type uh, uh, rock. Um, now for the enhanced oil recovery uh, uh, board. Okay. So, what's mean by what is enhanced oil recovery? So it is a technology you can use different fluids, like uh, you can use heat in, in the case of a steam. You can use different fluids uh, like uh, CO2, nitrogen, or you can use chemical uh, such as uh, polymer uh, uh, surfactant or um, uh, polymer surfactant what, uh, what, uh, uh, alkaline also. It can be used for enhanced oil recovery uh, to, to recover more oil. Okay, you just use normal uh, recovery method and uh, like water flooding and then you, ha you reach residual saturation and you want to increase the amount of oil that is produced or uh, reduce the amount of oil in your reservoir. So in general, uh, there is different stages of your reservoir. The first thing is the 100% saturation, uh, which was originally before the migration of oil. Then the stage of the primary drainage, where you reach uh, uh, initial water saturation at conate water saturation, the maximum uh, pressure, capillary pressure, with the oil invading or migrating from the salt rock to your reservoir. And then it is displacing brine on front of it. So it is a primary drainage. So in the primary drainage, it is the non-wetting phase, oil displacing the prime, the wetting phase. The third stage that we have is the secondary epibation. If you are applying water flooding or uh, noble production, you will find that uh, the, um, you, you just produce, because, uh, produce oil, but there is remaining amount of oil inside your uh, pores and it can be disconnected um, and uh, widely distributed according, uh, around your, uh, uh, your reservoir. Uh, and through this uh, secondary epibation, you will reach residual oil saturation. Okay. And for the enhanced oil recovery, again, you are using different another te technique to reduce the amount of oil that is in your reservoir. So you will reach uh, lower than the residual saturation here. So if this is residual saturation one, you will reach a lower residual saturation, residual saturation two. This is actually what we are go we are conducting in our lab. Okay, so this is a different process, and you have to follow all these steps in your. Uh, in your uh, enhanced oil recovery experiment in the lab. But before starting the experiment, uh, I want you to uh, understand some concept. Uh, so I, for, for the gas injection, um, uh, for gas injection, actually, you have to uh, use high pressure, inject in, uh, on high pressure formation uh, at the deep, deep pressure because you want uh, um, yeah, to, to reach the miscibility uh, pressure. You want the CO2 to be miscible with prime because uh, with oil, so uh, it will facilitate the production of oil. Also, uh, on the reverse, the steam has to, uh, but the gas injection also, you cannot use it uh, uh, for heavy oil because it will create asphaltine deposition. Okay. For the steam injection, um, steam injection, it can be used for heavy oil, extremely heavy oil, uh, but it has to be shallow reservoir because you don't, if you, it is a high, uh, deeper reservoir, uh, you, will can, you will lose heat. Okay, so you want to be, uh, it to be economic. 
For the chemical injection, you can use polymer, surfactant, or, um, or whatever, low salinity water, uh, whatever the, the chemical you are going to use. But for the polymer, you have to take care that it, um, although some of the polymer are being, uh, um, are being developed to handle high salinity water, but still um, uh, the water cannot be too saline because it will damage the property of your polymer. For the low salinity uh, injection, uh, of course, your, uh, your, uh, your saline water has to be of high salinity on the reverse. Actually, enhanced oil recovery techniques are being used around the world. Um, uh, two techniques actually is, uh, are being applied. The most important uh, one and the most widely uh, used is the thermal, okay, so it's a steam injection. And the, the following one is uh, gas injection with is a CO2. The other types of uh, enhanced oil recovery techniques are, uh, uh, was not used in a wider scale. Uh, the polymer injection, the, the nanoparticle injection, the alkaline, whatever the process it is, it is uh, if it was applied in the river, it is a very, uh, you know, on a small scale. But the actual production, so for enhanced oil recovery, uh, you can say that 2% of the global oil production was from enhanced oil recovery, which is corresponding to 1.7 million barrels of oil per day. Actually, there are some countries that uh, are using uh, enhanced oil recovery, are applying enhanced oil recovery techniques like uh, USA, Venezuela, Canada, as uh, you can see in this, uh, on this uh, part. So how to assess that your enhanced oil recovery technique is, um, is, uh, is, um, is valuable? So you have to uh, measure the recovery factor, which is uh, the amount, the initial oil in place, no, I'm sorry, uh, the ratio of oil production, so the oil produ produced, divided by the initial oil in place. Okay, so you can say this is uh, the residual oil saturation and this is the initial oil saturation. So you can say this. Actually, the recovery factor may be expressed in, on a different, as an efficiency, or the displacement efficiency and the, the sweep efficiency, the connected volume factor efficiency, the economic efficiency, and two, the, the red one here, the red uh, efficiency, are, um, can be increased using enhanced oil recovery techniques, like the displacement efficiency and the sweep efficiency. The displacement efficiency can be increased using the capillary number or alternating the capillary number, and for uh, the sweep efficiency can be used uh, by alternating the mobility ratio. And we will see um, uh, now in the, in the next couple of slides, I will discuss this. So there is um, three concepts. Um, uh, that you have to know you, uh, once you are designing your enhanced oil recovery technique. And this will um, uh, impact the amount of oil that you are going to uh, recover using this technique. The first one is the capillary number, the second is the gravitational segregation, and the third is the mobility ratio. So this is three, uh, uh, three concepts you have to understand and you, you have to design your technique around it. So for the capillary number, it is actually the balance between the viscous force and the capillary force. And this is the equation that you are used using uh, capillary number. So this is the viscosity of the displacing fluid, which is uh, in this case pri uh, the prime, okay? And the velocity and for the interfacial tension, okay? So wh what you have, uh, uh, so if in the case of that the capillary forces was dominant, okay? What will happen is that you find that the, uh, the capillary number uh, will be higher than, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, smaller than 10 to the power of minus five. Okay, so the, the lower the capillary number, okay, the more dominant the capillary forces. The higher the capillary number, the dominant is the viscous forces. So what can this do, um, uh, do any favor for enhanced oil recovery? Can we benefit from this expression in enhanced oil recovery? Actually, yes. From this curve, you can see here for the capillary number on the x-axis and the, the oil uh, saturation from starting from zero to one, okay? So this is the direction of increasing of oil, uh, sat uh, oil residual saturation in your reservoir. So in this direction, the amount of oil in your reservoir increase. And this direction, the capillary number, in this direction, the capillary number decrease. Okay, according to this curve, as you decrease the capillary number, the amount of residual oil in your reservoir increase. Okay, so the, the more, uh, the lower your capillary number, the more the residual saturation of your oil in your reservoir. Actually, it doesn't differ up to 10 to the power of minus 5, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect the amount of residual oil. So, 
do you have to increase do you want in enhanced oil recovery to increase our residual oil saturation or we don't we want to decrease it we want to decrease it for the enhanced oil recovery we want to decrease the residual amount of oil in place so what we what we will do we will lower uh, 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 increase the capillary number we want this capillary number value to increase Up, uh, 10 to the power of minus 5 or 10 to the power of minus 3. So the lower the, the, the capillary number that you can, uh, the higher the capillary number that you can get, the more oil that you can recover. So how can we change this value of capillary uh, number? You can increase, we want it to increase. You can increase the viscosity of the displacing fluid. So if you use uh, polymer, you will increase the viscosity, okay? You can increase the injection velocity. You can uh, decrease the interfacial tension, like the miscible fluid or using of the surfactant. Okay, so this is using uh, miscible fluid, using surfactant will decrease the, uh, the interfacial tension. Using polymer will increase uh, the viscosity. So this is how we can control this capillary number. And I will give you an example here. So if you, if the uh, the velocity in your reservoir to, was 10 to the power of minus five meter per second, interfacial tension was three, uh, six uh, times 10 to the power of minus two. Newton per meter and viscosity of water 10 to the power of minus three pascal second. Remember, this is an, a, a, an estimate number. It's not an exact number. So what you will find here in an actual uh, oil reservoir, what is happening? The capillary number is 10 to the power of minus seven. What you will, uh, you want here is to increase this uh, this uh, by 100. So to reach 10 to the power of minus five to 10 to the power of minus three. Okay, this is can, can be conducted. Uh, by altering the viscosity of your displacing fluid. So the brine, you will inject polymer with your brine uh, for uh, in, increase uh, the velocity, but you are limited with the velocity and decrease the interfacial tension. So what will happen when the, uh, the viscous force is the dominant force? So once you increase the capillary number, the viscous force is the dominant force. What you will happen that you will get a piston-like advance. So the, the brine will act like a piston. It will push the the uh, the oil in front of it uh, it will not bypass so it will not just bypass the oil and trap the oil in the middle of your pores so trap the oil in the middle of your pores this will not happen if you are uh, using a, a high capillary number or high flow rate uh, so so what you uh, what will happen you want uh, all the time you want your water to be acting like uh, or your injecting fluid you will be acting like a, a flat connect or a piston like advance not a snap off or by boss, okay? This is an uh, expression of where the water is just passing uh, uh, the oil and the driving it uh, in the middle of the board. This is the snap off or snap off also, or by boss. So what is about the gravity segregation? Um, if, you, if the difference between the density of your injecting fluid is very high, what will happen that the, the, uh, in the case of the gas, for example, the gas will float to the top and it will happen parent effect. So the gravity, so the CO2 will leave your, uh, your, uh, your crude oil and will float in the top. And you don't want this to happen because this will reduce the amount of oil that you want uh, to, um, to recover. And uh, we, we want to prevent it. So actually this is happening in the case of, uh, of injection of the CO2, of injection of natural gas or any light gases. So what happens is that the CO2 will float uh, and uh, will have the viscosity fingers. Um, or viscous, uh, of gravity segregation will, uh, I'm sorry, not viscosity finger, uh, gravity segregation or, uh, uh, or front here, tongue here, gravity tongue will uh, occur, okay? Uh, and this is why the water alternating gas technique are used to overcome because the water is heavier than the gas. So it can, to some extent, lower the gravity segregation of the gas. The third concept here is the mobility ratio or the sweep efficiency. So the sweep efficiency in general is the relation between the, uh, the relative permeability of, uh, of water times the viscosity of oil divided by the relative permeability of oil times the viscosity of water. So in general, if this mobility ratio was smaller than or equal to one, you will find that the water is, will be traveling as a piston-like advance. So it is pushing the liquid. It will not um, uh, uh, be of a higher, uh, higher velocity than, uh, or higher speed than the, than the oil, okay? So it will, uh, all the, the oil and the water will travel at the same speed. So it will act like a 
like a piston advance. So it will ha it will have higher sweep efficiency. Okay. So the lower the mobility ratio, the higher the sweep efficiency. So what about uh, if the mobility ratio was greater than one? What will happen? Okay. So if the mobility ratio is greater than one, this means the water will travel at a higher speed or the injection, uh, injection, um, injected fluid will travel at a higher speed. If the injected fluid, so imagine in this photo, so this is injected fluid, what will happen? It will travel in a high, on a higher speed more than the oil. <clears throat> so viscosity fingering will occur. And you don't, this means that there will be water breakthrough. And you don't want this. This means that you will not get uh, an oil, an uh, um, you will get a low sweep efficiency and you will get low uh, oil production. Okay. So uh, the mobility ratio is inversely proportional with the, with the sweep efficiency. Okay. And uh, for example, so when we achieve, um, for if you are looking at the viscosity of the oil and viscosity of the water, we want to achieve a lower mobility ratio, which means that we want to increase the viscosity of the water. If we want to increase the viscosity of the water, we apply polymer flooding. So polymer flooding will increase the mobility, uh, will decrease the mobility ratio um, and uh, will increase the slope efficiency and we will get oil production. So this is how you can design your uh, enhanced oil recovery um, uh, experiment. Uh, so the capillary number, you have to uh, design your experiment so that the, uh, the capillary number is higher than 10 to the power of minus 5 to uh, two 10 to the power of minus 3, which means high displacement efficiency and the initial uh, residual oil um, uh, and the amount of oil that is in, in your reservoir will be decreased. Okay. For the gravity segregation, you have to make the, 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 pressure, uh, the density difference between the injected fluid is not very high to avoid, um, to avoid uh, uh, gravity segregation. And the mobility ratio has to be lower than or equal to one to have high uh, sweep efficiency and to lower the chance of viscosity fingering. So now to the experimental uh, work part for the school flooding. I know it is a long lecture. I hope that you uh, understand uh, uh, what I'm delivering to you. So for the core uh, flooding experiment, uh, you have to, uh, there is uh, some steps here. You have to follow to prepare your uh, your um, uh, core. Okay, as you as I saw in your lab, you are preparing first. You are uh, saturating your core with brine. Uh, the early, early stage of your reservoir, then you will simulate the oil uh, migration, which is the primary drainage. You are injecting oil. Then you will uh, uh, simulate water flooding, which is the inhibition. Then you will inject the enhanced oil recovery uh, fluid. Okay. So the first step is you have to prepare your core. It is all, uh, for, uh, for all the steps that, uh, uh, or the experiment in petroleum uh, industry, you have to prepare your core, uh, wrap it with PTFD. Sometimes you don't need to wrap it with aluminum, but it is better. So aluminum, and then you will place it in the vitamin slave, place it in the uh, core holder. So this is the setup, so the old pump, and there is three accumulators, one for oil, one for prime, and one for, what I'm showing you is, a, is a experience for uh, uh, nanosilica. Uh, this is a published paper on nanosilica, and this is a confining pressure pump, and you, uh, this is a bag pressure regulator, and this is a graduated cylinder. So what happened here is that you will vacuum your system, make sure that it is for, uh, air free, and then you start injecting five poor volume prime which is uh, you, have, uh, you have to saturate your prime first with 100%, uh, make sure that your uh, core, saturate um, your core, I'm sorry. So it saturates your core uh, or pore volume of your core with 100% prime. Then the next step is to, to uh, simulate the migration of oil in your reservoir, which in this case, you have to inject oil. So the oil is injected in your, uh, on your reservoir and the brine is, um, is uh, displaced. Um, actually, you can use the porous plate here if you want to reach higher initial water saturation. So the porous plate will allow you to increase the, 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 water satur uh, the, uh, the residual saturation of oil, okay? I'm sorry, the initial saturation of oil. So you can uh, use oil, so the oil will be will displace uh, the brine out of the core. And you, in some experiments, you don't have to use the porous plate. But uh, actually, the initial saturation of oil here that you will start with will be uh, slightly uh, small. But you can adjust it using the, the back pressure regulator and the, uh, the pressure of the oil. Okay? The back pressure regulator pressure of the oil can control your pressure uh, inside your core. 
So, okay, so what will happen here is the oil will displace the brine outside of, uh, of your core and until no more, so you will keep injecting oil until no more brine is coming out of your, uh, uh, is received. You don't have to receive uh, uh, more, uh, more brine, so you constant, uh, constant uh, oil and constant uh, no, uh, no more brine are coming out of your core. So you uh, like, um, assume that you reach an irreducible water saturation, so you will, uh, you calculate the irreducible water saturation, which is the volume of brine uh, that you collected, you get out of the core, divided by the bore volume, and this all value is subtracted from one. So now you get the irreducible water saturation in your core. Again, the initial water saturation can be uh, uh, one takeaway is uh, uh, residual, irreducible water saturation, okay? So this is the second step. So it is the primary drainage step. All the steps, we are preparing our core for the enhanced oil recovery step. The third step is the secondary impipation, which is uh, in this case is the water flooding. So what we uh, what we uh, we do here is the, to inject the brine again in this core, and the brine. What will happen? The brine will displace some of the oil out of your core, and will, some of the uh, oil will be remaining inside, residually trapped in your core. So what uh, so what you, uh, what you want here is to calculate. The, uh, the residual oil saturation, and you can calculate also the recovery factor, which is the amount of oil produced divided by the initial oil in place. So the amount of oil produced here, so you, you will continue until no more oil is produced, okay? So this is step, so the prime will displace the oil out of the core, and you will continue running this until no more oil is displaced. So what we have here is the, is the brine is injected, Okay, and the recovery factor is calculated. We will ha uh, it is dependent on the oil production. So what you will find here is the oil production will increase until no more. So you have you reach plateau. No more brine is produced. Uh, I'm sorry, no more oil is produced. So you can calculate the residual oil saturation in your core. It is the amount of oil, the volume of oil that you received outside divided by the bore volume. Take away the initial oil in place. Okay. So this is the equation that you are using to calculate the residual oil saturation. So what about the recovery factor? It is actually the volume of oil, the oil produced, the volume of oil that you received, divided by the initial oil in place. So initial oil saturation at the bottom and uh, the volume of oil divided by the bore volume because you wanted to make a saturation, okay, to get a saturation. So this is the recovery factor. This is how you calculate the recovery factor. The fourth step is the tertiary recovery. So for the tertiary recovery experiment, so now you are injecting brine, okay? So we reach it at this step. In this step, we will start from this point and we will use our enhanced oil recovery fluid. So in this case, it is a nano silica, okay? So what will happen here is the oil will start, we reach it at the end of water production that no more oil is produced. But once you start to inject the uh, silica or polymer or whatever the, in, uh, the enhanced oil recovery fluid that you are using, more, some production, some oil will, uh, you will monitor some of the oil are getting out of your core and you are receiving more oil. So the uh, silica are injected here, okay? And your oil is, uh, uh, you start to receive uh, oil from uh, out of your core and you will continue flooding, okay? So the water flooding will continue until no more oil is received, okay, and you are reaching a plateau. So what, what is happening here, as you can see here, if your nano, a nanopolymer will just displace some of the oil out, the residual oil out, and it uh, goes with the nanoparticle uh, brine and the oil is coming out, this will, this will continue until no more oil is coming. And you will calculate the residual saturation at the end, which is the volume of oil col collected at this step, divided by the bore volume of your core, and you will take away this value from the residual oil saturation at the previous stage, step three. Recovery factor, again, it is the oil production divided by the initial oil in place. Recovery factor here is cumulative, okay? So it is the volume collected in step three plus the volume of oil collected in step four divided by the bore volume. All of this divided by the initial oil in, in place, which is the initial oil saturation which is calculated in step two, which is the primary drainage, okay? 
uh, you can uh, uh, calculate also displacement efficiency for this type of uh, enhanced oil recovery nanosilica. So it's a residual saturation uh, after applying the nanosilica divided by the residual saturation when we applied um, residual oil saturation when we applied uh, uh, just the water flooding or brine flooding. And this will be take away from one uh, times 100. So you will get uh, enhanced uh, uh, displacement efficiency as a person. You can, uh, in this case, we use silica nano, nanoparticle as, uh, as a tertiary uh, recovery technique. But sometimes, so we started with brine until we reach a plateau. So uh, then we started with the silica uh, uh, nanoparticle uh, uh, until we reach another plateau. But sometimes we want to, like we want to play. So we, instead of water, uh, uh, if we started with water flooding, you start uh, um, directly with. Uh, so this is the water flooding. We start directly with the silica nanoparticle and see if uh, if we don't have to uh, apply secondary uh, to be tertiary technique. We can di directly um, inject silica instead of water flooding and see. And actually, there is a, a interesting um, higher recovery when we use uh, silica. Uh, like a concentration of 0.18 percent, which is the highest, uh, the highest uh, recovery. So this is the end of lecture um, uh, two, and uh, I hope that you did enjoy it. I know this um, it is a long lecture, but um, uh, hope the best for you. Thank you, Dr. Rahab. Uh, thank you very much for the great experience you are sharing thank with you. us, uh, and for the audience. Please, if you have any question, please write it uh, below the video on YouTube or in the video on uh, Facebook, and we will collect these questions and we will send it to uh, Dr. Rahab, and we promise to get you uh, the answer as soon as possible. Thank you, Dr. Rahab, again. Thank you.